Okay, class, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to cover lab values and lines. So uh, again, like we touched on in our other lectures in uh, acute care, clinical reasoning, uh, lab value interpretation and line management are some of the uh, core skills that we really have to uh, have um, in managing these patients in this setting. Because again, lab values give us a pretty good reflection on the patient's clinical status and lines are something that we have to manage in order to keep the patient safe um, while we are rehabilitating them um, within the acute care uh, setting. So the uh, clinical reasoning, right, and these come from uh, updated guidelines. So the Academy of Acute Care Physical Therapy had published guidelines uh, a few years ago that um, they've now provided an update to back in 2019. Uh, where we've kind of uh, moved away from more of a, uh, a more traditional sense to more contemporary practice, where we're looking at uh, more on the trends and then a risk versus benefit uh, approach versus hard stops to determining whether a patient's appropriate or not, right? So we're, you know, the thing we really need to stress, and this is even in the older guidelines, is to not exclusively rely on a single lab value to inform your clinical decision making, right? We don't do this with any other you know, bit of information when we're assessing a patient, right? We are you know, using a multitude of different data points to get a high resolution, if you want to use that perspective, high resolution assessment, right? If we rely on just one point, our resolution for the, the image of how this patient's doing is gonna be a little bit limited. So including you know, a multitude of lab values, multitude of other factors, especially the trends of the lab, right? Consider what, what, is that, what does that lab value look like over a period of time? Other things we need to consider when we're looking at the lab too, when was it drawn, right? Lab values taken in the morning may not be exactly you know, consistent with how the patient's doing in the afternoon, right? What's the clinical status of the patient, right? Are they, you know, they have a hemoglobin of eight, right? Or maybe a little bit less than eight, but their heart rate's normal. They're not, not short of breath. Blood pressure is normal, right? Maybe that's just where they sit at normally, right? So we gotta have to factor that in too. And also consider the patient demographics, the chronicity of the condition, health conditions, right? There are gonna be slight differences across different demographics. Patients with certain chronic conditions um, will have, maybe have chronically elevated values or chronically lowered values, right? So again, you know, each individual's physiology is unique to the individual's physiology, right? And within a construct of normal or a, a continuum of normal. And again, just like everything, weigh the risks and benefits, right? So um, the benefits of providing treatment to that patient versus the harm of you know, potential, you know, working with a patient who's not appropriate, but there's also potentially a harm with not providing care. And what does that look like for, you know, long-term consequences in terms of their, um, you know, their functional needs or functional abilities, right? If patients stay in bed, right, you know, we know the effects of bed rests on muscle function, on nerve function, right? So, you know, holding care, you know, is something that we need to really take seriously, right? Because there's, there's significant ramifications for that too. So these are some um, uh, guidelines that came from Norton Craft back in 2012. Again, this was, you know, a little, a little bit different perspective than kind of what we're taking now with the new guidelines. This had some pretty like, you know, hardline um, uh, values, specifically looking at hematocrit, hemoglobin platelets. Um, again, this is more of a focus on intensive care patients. Um, so a little bit more acute. Your, your decision making goes into that as well. Um, but even within that, they they mentioned that like you know this assessment, but it was more of a hard stop. So we really moved more towards uh, this model, which kind of came from uh, Hodgson et al. back in 2014, which is included in your packet, um, in your readings. Um, and updated now in these in these in these new guidelines from the academy of moving more from a stoplight like just you know a binomial right uh, decision appropriate not appropriate versus you know a spectrum right green red or sorry green yellow red 
patient may be within a normal range or maybe they are within a range that's, you know, it's more or less like it's, they're, they're lower than normal, but what's their clinical status, right? So we're gonna proceed with caution versus just saying stop altogether. And there's still, you know, situations where we are, we are gonna put a hard stop in, but again, we, it gives a little bit more wiggle room um, and allows the therapist really, you know, at an elevated status of practice where we're, where we're reasoning, right? We're using, you know, um, we're appraising the evidence, appraising the information in front of us and coming up with a, a decision, right? We're, we're using reasoning versus being prescriptive and following a protocol. We're using guidelines really as what they're intended to be to guide practice, not to dictate or inform practice, right? So in the next settings, we'll go over uh, the lab values that you'll see often um, in acute care practice. Um, we're not gonna dive too deep into specifics because the reasoning is gonna be pretty much the same for whether um, you know, labs are elevated or low. Um, there's a great free access um, guideline from the Academy of Acute Care Physical Therapy, which informed a lot of this uh, lecture. And uh, you know, it's in your packet. I recommend uh, just keeping that handy um, for you while you're on your acute care affiliations because it's, it's a great resource, all right? So with that, we'll end here and then we'll move on to our next section.